You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to the Linda Fostek Show. Disasters are all around us. Turn on the news and Mother Nature is on a rampage. Personal disasters put our lives on hold or derail us completely. Join Linda as she invites you to become part of the solution. It's time to get off the worry-go-round with your host, Linda Fostek. Welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round. We are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you would like to join in the conversation tonight, please call in at 866-451-1451. Don't let the next disaster catch you by surprise. Make sure you get your free disaster planning roadmap and disaster checklist today at thecrisisplanner.com. Lots of things happening in the news. I just see that there is a uh, depression forming on the border of, um, I guess, uh, South Carolina and Georgia that is actually bringing lots and lots of rain, and it is expected to form into something more significant as it approaches the coast of North Carolina. Fortunately, it should only be a rain event, but the ocean waters are warm enough for tropical formation, so we better keep an eye on it for the next couple of days because we do not anticipate it upgrading into a tropical storm or or hurricane at this point, but you never know, so you better pay attention. So be prepared to be wet for the next couple of days in the southeast and uh, actually moving up into the mid-Atlantic states as the week progresses. So we are looking for some significant rainfall even here in New York. So be aware, we are in hurricane season right now and things are happening. It is also, sad to report, once again, fire season. Well, the fires in Arizona seem to have subsided. Um, Now we have several fires burning in Los Angeles area and uh, really causing some significant problems. And as always, weather dictates how quickly they're able to get these fires under control. The fire that is burning now is actually considered one of the most serious fires they've had in a very long time in um, called the Soledad fire. Um, and is threatening the Santa Clarita area as well. So they are very concerned. It's in fire season, is in full swing. So I'm going to give you a couple of fire prevention tips that everybody needs to know. Uh, according to the, the Forest Service, every year more than 75,000 wildfires are reported in the United States. They burn over 7 million acres a, a year. And every state is actually at risk of forest fires. We've had some pretty significant fires here on Long Island in the past. Um, Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. So if you remember the old saying with the Smokey the Bear, uh, only you can prevent forest fires, I guess that really is true because if nine out of ten fires are caused by people and they act, on average, destroy 2,500 billions buildings every year. While lightning is the cause of most of the non-human fires, um, lightning strikes, obviously, there's a lot more thunderstorms and lightning storms in the summer months, so obviously there's a bigger chance of lightning strikes igniting a fire. Uh, most of those actually that only represents 10% of all the wildfires, 
and uh, they, you know, the rest of it is caused by us, by campfires, fireworks, yard waste burning, cigarettes being thrown out of cars. You know, I how often do you see people tossing a butt out of their vehicle as they're going down the road? Please be aware that that is a major cause of fires. And another cause of fires, which a lot of people don't think of, is your vehicle itself. If you park off the road or you break down and you are on the side of the road and you are over combustible material, your catalytic converter and some of the other parts of your engine are very hot. And if the conditions are right, it's very easy to start a fire with a car pulled over dry vegetation. So really make sure that if you have to pull your car over the, on the side of the road, that you are on a designated shoulder that doesn't have any dry vegetation on it, that you can, so that you do not ignite that vegetation and start a fire. And, you know, to prevent wildfires, you want to comply with all the local laws and regulations. Check the weather. I mean, one of the most significant things that happens in, in California is the Santa Ana winds blow down from the, the mountains and they just, once a fire gets started, those winds can be 100 miles an hour and they literally just fan the flames and, and flames jump all over the place and it ignites multiple mini fires everywhere, which then becomes out of control and as they merge together into a giant fire. So check the weather. You know, you want to make sure you're not burning things if there's a, a risk of high winds. I mean, one of the greatest inventions are, are some of these, um, you know, I know everybody is loving their little um, backyard um, uh, heating devices. Make sure that they're propane instead of wood because you're not going to have the kind of sparks with propane. Um, and also they tend to be um, easier to control. Um, and use only controlled locations for burning. If you are making a campfire, make sure that it is inside of a metal container so that it's not igniting dry uh, foliage and stuff underneath the campfire. And don't burn anything unusual or combustible like gasoline. or can Don't put any of those things on a fire because that can very quickly make a fire go out of control. And sometimes even garbage. I mean, things, you know, sparks can fly. You can actually create situations where fires can actually be exacerbated by what we are doing. So... Make sure you remember only you can prevent forest fires and it really is up to each and every one of us to minimize the fires that we experience. Um, as far as what's going on in the world, um, coronavirus, the death rate seems to be coming down significantly. We actually had um, a, a hit a record low for deaths in the United States. Um, it was actually, we only had like 215 new deaths uh, yesterday, which is like the lowest number we've ever had. Um, their cases are up significantly, though, and that's something we have to watch because as they're diagnosing new cases and some of these patients do become sicker, there is a risk, risk of a surge in deaths in some of these states that are seeing surges in coronavirus cases. So be aware that Fully, half of the patients that have been diagnosed with coronavirus have already recovered, which is a wonderful, which is great news. But we have so many new people being diagnosed. And in fact, most of those people, a significant number of those new diagnosed, newly diagnosed cases are people under the age of 50. So young people who have been out um to bars, to beaches, to parties, to protests, to riots, to whatever, to rallies, whatever. Any place that you've been gathering in large numbers because you're saying, well, I, I'm not going to get that sick. Unfortunately, many of you are getting sick. So it is something that you really need to be aware of that you have a personal responsibility, not just for yourself, but for everybody that you come in contact with. 
And probably one of the sickest things I've heard is these coronavirus parties in in Alabama where they're trying to deliberately they bring invite an infected person to the party and try to see who gets infected first. I mean, this is really sick behavior. This is not being a responsible adult for sure. We are going to be taking our first break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We will see you on the other side of the break. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Before the break, I was talking about just some of the current disasters around and about in the world, including our wildfires in California, the um, major depression that is forming in Georgia and South Carolina just now that is actually threatening to have some tropical development, although not truly anticipated. Obviously, coronavirus is something that is still very much in the news and something that we need to be responsible for. And how do we be responsible? Take that personal responsibility. Wear your mask if not to protect you, to protect others, to have that responsibility to be the one for other people, to protect them. Wear your mask if you're inside or if you're going to be within in close proximity to other people. Um, maintain your healthy distancing. That six foot of space of distance around you is a great way to prevent getting exposed to coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently. Sing the happy birthday song twice, and that's 20 seconds. Washing your hands with soap and water is the best way to keep your hands clean. And if you can't wash your hands, use hand sanitizer. But make sure you use a hand sanitizer that does not contain methanol. Five more products from Mexico have been banned because they contained methanol, which is poisonous, can cause seizures, unconsciousness, can cause major, major problems. Methanol is not something you should be putting on your body any way, shape, or form. Make sure that your hand sanitizer has ethanol, which is safe alcohol to use, and it needs to be 60% alcohol. Um, there's a whole list of hand sanitizers from Mexico that have been banned in the United States, but you may find them on some of the shelves in some less than reputable stores or stores that have not gotten the message yet. So definitely read the ingredients on the label to keep yourself safe. The other thing that has is kind of a disaster right now 
is what's going on in our cities in terms of the uptick of crime and shootings that is going on around the country uh, with all of this activity to pull back on the reins of our police forces and and really remove, in some cases, remove the police presence from the neighborhoods that need that the most. And who's suffering from this violence are the people, the people, the law-abiding people in those communities are suffering from this violence. I watched a horrible video today of a man walking his six-year-old daughter across the street in New York City, and a drive-by shot him dead while he was holding his daughter's hand right on the street. I mean, this is unnecessary, and, and it certainly doesn't improve anybody's life. It only makes it worse for every single person out there. We need to all pull together to keep our cities safe, to keep the people safe within their that they their children aren't going to get shot where they're out playing on the playground or in front of their house. I mean, five children were killed this weekend, and that is heartbreaking for every one of those parents who lost a child. So many of our cities have just, I mean, and New York City is a perfect example. They eliminated the plainclothes crime units, which actually kind of kept things under control in the neighborhoods and kept the pe- the law-abiding people in those neighborhoods safe by removing them. The, the bad people can see exactly who the cops are. They know where they are. And the other problem is we have this revolving door of no bail for anybody anymore. So they arrest them, they go, there's no bail, they're released, and they're right back out there hurting people again. I, I don't understand the logic of this. It, it just seems to be a complete breakdown of civil society, of people behaving in the way that they should behave. Um, and it, it truly, truly is frightening to anybody who lives in these neighborhoods or anybody who treasures these cities for the, the, the gems that they can be, for the amazing places that they are. Um, I personally don't have any interest in going to New York City right now. First of all, nothing is open, but besides that, even if things were open with the way um, that the police are being treated and the way that they are not enforcing the laws, I'd be frightened to be in the city. So it's something that we all need to consider. Yes, bad police need to be removed. Absolutely. I totally agree that there needs to be better record keeping and reporting so that bad police don't move from one job to another job when they're terminated from one for bad behavior and they go someplace else. There needs to be some sort of tracking on that. But good policing and good uh, community relationships are so essential to making everybody feel safe. And we all deserve to live in a safe place. Nobody should have to live someplace where they fear for their lives and for their children's lives on a daily basis because they don't know who's who's going to shoot them for no reason. So I'm, I'm not saying that... Um, what I'm not saying is that people shouldn't have guns. People should have guns legally to protect themselves. Absolutely. I am a firm believer in the Second Amendment. But to hog tie the police in such a way that they can no longer provide the security that law-abiding people demand and expect is, is irresponsible on the part of of the leaders of these cities and the governors and the mayors and the city councils who are probably safely ensconced in their own homes with personal security guards to protect them while the average citizen is left out there to fend for themselves. It's really, it is a crime. We're now going to actually change the subject and get to my topic for the for tonight and I am so so excited uh, we're going to be talking about um, women veterans and the challenges that they have in health care and homelessness today and I do have a very special guest that I'm going to be bringing on after this next break her name is Vaughn 
Griggs Laws, and she's retired U.S. Air Force. She's worked with OSHA. She is has an amazing nonprofit that she's going to be sharing with us tonight. And we are going to have this amazing com- conversation about the plight of women veterans in today because the VA seems woefully equipped to service these veterans in their to, to the needs that they actually have. It's, so, it's really kind of frightening to me. So once again, we're going to take our break. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and we will see you on the other side of the break. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it mike zorick a three-time california state champion in greco roman wrestling at 114 pounds mike blind since birth was born in hartford connecticut he was a six-time national placer including two seconds two-thirds and two-fourths he also won the veterans folk style wrestling twice at 152 pounds in all these tournaments he was the only blind competitor Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And we are getting right to our topic about women's veterans and the challenges they face in healthcare and homelessness. With, and it is really my pleasure to introduce my guest tonight, Vaughn Griggs Laws, and she is an inspirational certified health and safety professional and consultant with over 30 years of occupational health and safety environmental experience in various industries. She served in our United States Air Force for 20 years and is retired. She is an adjunct instructor at Texas A&M and an Ocean, OSHA Regional VI Uh, She was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and her health and safety career began in the Air Force as a safety craftsman, and she really earned lots of awards during her 20-year military career. She is a retired, disabled veteran of Operation Desert Storm and Shield, um, and she has experienced firsthand the challenges of being a woman veteran and dealing with the VA in both healthcare and homelessness. Welcome, Vaughn. Hi, Linda, and to the listening audience. It is so exciting to have you here. And, you know, we just met recently, and your story I just found so compelling. And, you know, You served in the Air Force for 20 years, you know, and what what would you say your biggest accomplishment was in the Air Force? Oh, let's see. I would say the 
opportunity to enlighten individuals on hazards that uh, were present and potential hazards that kept them from fatality and injury. Well, you're right up my alley with the disaster prevention, I'm sure. <laughs> That's for sure. And, you know, and you know, you were in Desert Storm and Desert Shield. And, I mean, I remember that vividly. Um, it was like the Hundred Days War. Uh, it was really short and sweet. We were in and out so fast, most of us didn't even know that it happened. But at that time, women in the military we're really starting to have a more significant role in the military. Did you, how challenging was that for you, kind of breaking through those ceilings of, and obstacles? Well, the greatest challenge for me was being a divorced single parent and the fright of having to leave my children behind. That, that was my greatest concern. Would I be returning and their well-being while I was away? Wow. Uh, you know, so you had to find somebody to watch your children while you were deployed. Absolutely. And as you gave notice to, yes, our campaign came and went. It was so short that it's hardly ever mentioned amongst any of our previous wars. Yeah, it, it was... I mean, for a lot of people, it was like, what? <laughs> I mean, I guess the only one shorter than that was the when we invaded Granada <laughs> you know? um, to rescue those um, medical students. That was during Ronald yeah. Reagan's time. But, uh, you know, I mean, but really, I mean, de being deployed and having to leave your children behind. How old were your children at that time? They were 10 and 8. Oh my goodness, and yeah. and and who did you leave them with? Well, I had colleagues that uh, there. One thing about uh, the military uh, family, uh, the embracement of each other is very, very strong. When I say you become a unit, you actually do become a unit, and everyone's goal is to help each other. Uh, you, you band together and you find out who's in need of what. And it, it wasn't difficult getting someone to step up to the plate. Now, when I deployed, I was stationed in Germany. And so I didn't send my children back stateside uh, for that 18 months away. They remain in Germany. Wow. So you were actually overseas when you were deployed to Desert Storm. and. Yeah. And your children remained in Germany. How that had to be scary for everybody because here your children are in a foreign country and you're someplace else completely. You were in Kuwait, <laughs> yeah, probably. Absolutely. And, you know, which is another whole uh, uh, continent away, basically. And uh, your children were in the hands of somebody that you trusted from the military. That it, it, that is totally amazing. So, and then after you were finished with that deployment, how long were you overseas? I spent a, a, after that. I had an additional two years in Germany on that assignment, and after Germany, I went to the United Kingdom for a consecutive six years. Wow. So you spent a lot of time in, in, of your military career overseas. Fourteen and a half years were in Europe, yes. That's very exciting. You know, I, I think everybody should live in a foreign country at some point in their life because you really get a different perspective about how things work in other places. I know myself, when I lived overseas, I lived on an, a, a, what was actually an army base on the island of Kwajalein. And my appreciation for the freedom that I had in the United States was greatly increased having lived in, on a military installation for three and a half years, believe me. <laughs> yes, yeah, it can definitely cause you to be more appreciative. Yeah. I exactly. Agree. So, you know, I know you've... Now, how long have you actually been retired? 
I retired in 2001 from active duty, and I shortly after moved to the state of Texas, and I served with the State Guard, the National State Guard. We are a backup to the National Guard and the Army Reserve units. Texas is one of the few states that has its own uh, military counterpart. So we're, wow. we would be third tier, yes. Wow. That, you know, so you, you transitioned from the Air Force to the uh, Texas State Guard. We're going to continue yes. this conversation on the other side of the break. Once again, I am your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round. We are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And please come back after the break for more conversation with Vaughn. I'm so excited to hear more about her story. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, It's like a a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest tonight, Vaughn Gibb. Uh, Griggs Law. I always want to make it Gibbs instead of Griggs. <laughs> and uh, she is a reti- retired from the U.S. Air Force. And um, we have been having a conversation about women veterans and really the challenges that they face in health care and homelessness. So women's ve- veterans issues are very close to your heart, Vaughn. You know, and you know, have you experienced some of these challenges that we're going to be talking about tonight? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where my passion and compassion comes from. The experience that I had firsthand, it wasn't anything that anyone had to tell me. It was a journey that was necessary for me to experience to be able to want to reach back and help. Wow. You know, you said that when, you know, when you were separated from the Air Force, you told me that literally the health care system at the VA hospitals was not set up for women at all. You know, what kind of challenges did you experience with that just for routine women care? <laughs> well, primarily the Veterans Administration has been a great service and uh, offer programs to our male counterparts. Historically, why? Because women were a very uh, minimum, as you would say, in numbers. While we're growing on the scale of enlisting in the armed forces, our return coming back has been different. And I worked at the Dallas VA Medical Center for nine and a half years. And uh, this was Uh, Just during the same time frame that I was facing my own displacement of shelter is when I applied to work at the VA. And transitioning uh, from the Mississippi VA in Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, what I learned was that here in Texas at that time, there wasn't a specific designated clinic for females. So... Your primary care services, like your annual pap smear, uh, your cervical cancer exams, your breast exams, things of that nature, the VA did not service for birth control. We were outsourced to third-party clinicians, third-party care centers. So 
we did not at that time have a designated women's clinic within the VA. Now, uh, fast forward, most of our VA centers around the country are now uh, giving uh, veterans health care specifically to women, but not all, not all. So that within itself would definitely uh, cause women not to trust going to the VA. Uh, if you if you know you're going to go and you're going to ask to see a clinician because you're having female-related problems or concerns, and you're told, no, we can't assist you, but we can outsource you to another clinic. Well, that could cause a longer wait and an appointment. So if it's something uh. that's considered to be chronic, you know, versus acute, it, it's okay. If it's chronic and I can wait 30 days, 45 days to be seen at a third-party provider, that's okay. But if I'm having an uh, you know, an acute crisis and I need to be seen now, uh, that would definitely cause a woman not to trust the treatment. Wow. So, you know, there were challenges, but it does sound like they, you know, I mean, as the numbers of women in the military have increased, I think it's somewhere around 15 to 18 percent of the military now is female. So obviously they've they've had to make some adjustments in their medical provision for women as more and more women are joining the military, I would think. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now you you mentioned that you yourself actually became homeless as a veteran. How in the world did that happen? Here you are, a successful woman. Now, you said you're disabled, you're a disabled veteran, but how in the world did you end up homeless? Well, as someone serving on active duty, your service providers, you know, they've got your sick, they've got your back. I would say that the Air Force did its part while I was serving. Once you're discharged, it's no longer their obligation to offer support. That's where these other agencies become uh, the backbone for veteran supports, whether it's your uh, disabled veterans organization, your American Legions, your wounded warrior, and, you know, those lists are very, very long. However, not every municipality has those organizations ah. that are thriving or that have great funding support. So most of those are also male dominant and they don't have the same care or compassion. They will have a female auxiliary, usually that's run by the wives or sometimes the daughters of a veteran that has served. But uh, I would say those are somewhat antiquated systems because those are your World War II veterans, you know. Yeah, and they're dying off and they're dying off quickly (laughs) at this point. Right, and so since around 2012, the VA as a whole, the Veterans Affairs as a whole has begun focusing on women's veterans' health programs. Uh, Again, uh, while funding is there, it takes time to initiate those services, such as you've got to remodel your premises to be able to bring in the proper equipment, the proper scanning equipment. Uh, You don't just go out and buy a breast cancer scan machine, you know, and and so having trained personnel to operate the equipment. And so it doesn't happen overnight. So for me, for me, what led to homelessness, though, I, I recently moved to Dallas, Texas from Mississippi. I had the first property that I purchased, which was in the United Kingdom, had gone vacant. And at that time, the property had been vacant for six months. So it was on the market for for lease or for rent. And so I was keeping a mortgage there with insurance uh. and having to pay the property manager. So I still had monthly obligations. I had also purchased a home in Mississippi, 
which were damaged by Hurricane Katrina. So oh, the my. That was, yeah, the family that was renting that home became displaced. They were a military family, and they were reassigned to a uh, base in Georgia. So now I had two vacant properties with monthly requirements. Now, though the home... Yeah. yeah. Though the home in Mississippi was covered under insurance with the process of FEMA, the insurance litigation, and the wow. settlement. Right, right. Oh, and my so goodness. That property, yeah, that property was coming up on two months of being vacant. And I had a property in Texas that oh I was my. in a, a lease to purchase. So, needless to I say, think. you were overextended. We're going to get more into how you actually ended up being homeless after this next break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round. We are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest, Vaughn Griggs Law. And she has been sharing how she actually became a homeless veteran with three properties with responsibilities. Oh, my gosh. We'll see you on the other side of the break. (laughs) MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to Be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. French Rastafarian baker Chef Ugmat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back. Everyone, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with my very special guest, Vaughn Griggs Law, who's retired U.S. Air Force, who ended up as a homeless vet after she actually had invested, actually owned a home in England when she was deployed there was then transferred to Mississippi, bought a home there, still had all these obligations, unable to sell the home in in England, then moved from Mississippi to Dallas, Texas, was renting her home in Mississippi when Katrina took the roof off, and obviously that rent stopped. So now she's in Dallas, and what happened in Dallas that you ended up being homeless? I entered into a lease to purchase property under a real estate company, Century 21. Six months into that property, I was notified by an investor that the property had been sold. The property was, well, was being sold. The property was actually in a foreclosure, and I was not aware that my Century 21 agent said that she was not aware of it. 
So I had a 30-day window to relocate. Oh, my goodness. So yes. they literally sold the house out from under you. Was this yes. during the, the big housing de- debacle in, in like 2008 time frame? Or was this no, before it, that? It was actually prior to that. This was 2006. Uh-huh. It was 2006, yes. Wow. So how long were you actually homeless? Uh, right at three months. It was a, it was a short period. And, and what made it short for me was that uh, I was employed. And uh, as I said, Hurricane Katrina hit. I was serving with the Texas State Guard. I was working two jobs. I was an adjunct instructor for Texas A&M, so I was teaching part-time, and I was working part-time at the VA hospital on the weekends. Well, because Texas was one of the uh, major sites to evacuate and those that relocated. Oh, my goodness, of course. There was no housing because everybody moved there from Katrina. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So you couldn't find any place to live for three months. So but it gave me the opportunity to go back on active duty. So the state guard was activated, and that uh, put me on order. So my time in the shelter was shortened by, you know, I, I stayed in a shelter for three weeks. Thank God it was a short period. Uh, once we activated uh, on active duty with the Texas State Guard, we were put in hotel. So I so, literally so Vaughn, uh-huh. you were in the shelter with your children who were how old at that time? Uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter was 23, so she had an she, apartment. She was out. My, yes, and so my second daughter would have been 21, 20, 22, 23, 21. And then I have, uh, by then I had a son. I had become an adopted parent and he was 12. So my oldest daughter had just recently gotten an apartment and the benefit there was that the children were able to stay with her. Oh, God However, bless you. There was, there was still that feeling of guilt that I was in a position that I wasn't able to provide housing for my children. Well, your firsthand experience in having been a homeless veteran, I mean, that really opened your eyes to the plight of so many homeless women veterans out there. And and the situation that makes their homelessness different from men who are homeless, in that so often the women veterans have children that they have to take with them. So a lot of the uh, homeless housing is not set up to bring children, is it? Absolutely. And the nonprofits that oversee shelters for women, they have particular guidelines. They are on different charters with different goals. My experience was that so I had children, I couldn't get in a traditional shelter for women because it wasn't related to domestic violence. I had uh, income. I had uh, right. I had two jobs. I had a military retirement check. And so you have income, you have a vehicle, and, and so there are some caveats that you have to fill those wow. requirements. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So we are going to take our last break and then we're going to find out all about the nonprofit that Vaughn has founded to help homeless women veterans. And we will be discussing that after the break. Once again, I'm your host, Linda Fostek, and this is the Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry go round. And we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And we will see you on the other side of the break. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. 
The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at SoarWithKatie.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Linda Postek, and this is the Linda Postek Show. Get off the worry-go-round, and we are live tonight on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio with my very special guest, Vaughn Griggs-Law. She's retired U.S. Air Force. She has taken up the cause of homeless women veterans. How somebody, you know, I mean, everybody be who is homeless has gotten there on their own unique journey. There is not one standard thing that you can say, well, they're homeless because they have PTSD or they're homeless because, you know, because they are lazy. They're, you know, circumstances beyond people's control can put, make them homeless. And Vaughn actually found herself homeless at one point in her life. She had this experience and it was eye opening to her. Um, and she has actually taken that negative and turned it into something amazing. She's actually the founder of a nonprofit called Joy Restored Outreach LLC. So, what is the mission of Joy Restored Outlet, Outreach? Our mission is to offer housing exclusively for homeless female veterans and their children. Wow. And where is where is your um, first house? And I'm going to call it your first house because I see your vision as being much bigger than just a single residence that you are putting together. Where is this first location going to oh. be? Well, thank you for embracing the vision. The first property is a 4,200-square-foot dwelling, and it is in the north side city of St. Louis, Missouri. And this is where you actually grew up? This was the home you grew up in? Yes, it is. After my parents passed, I had an opportunity to purchase the home and, uh, yeah, to remodel it for this project, yes. And how many homeless veterans uh, and their children are you expecting to be able to house in this location? We'll be able to house 18 females. Wow. So this is really, a, a it, it will make a significant difference for those 18 women and their children. How, yeah. you know... I mean, obviously, fundraising is something that is probably the biggest challenge of any um, nonprofit. And I know you just had a fundraising event. Um, and, you know, I want 
people to know how they can get in touch with you if they want to help out with homeless veterans, homeless female veterans especially, and how they can get in touch with you or how they can make a donation to your nonprofit. Can you give us uh, contact information? Yes, thank you for asking, Linda. They can do that straight from the website, joyrestoredoutreach.org. They can uh, put leave a note in the contact me, their donation button. They can donate online. They can donate through PayPal. There's also a cash app, Joy Restored Outreach. Awesome. I, you know, really, I think these are women who have served this country with honor and dignity. These are women that should not be forgotten. And every single one of them deserves a safe place to live with their children. If they find themselves in a situation of being homeless, Vaughn, you are doing God's work. And I'm so blessed to know you. I'm so grateful. I want to thank you for joining me this week and for joining Vaughn on her journey to really make a difference for homeless female veterans. Don't let a disaster blindside you. Get your free planning roadmap and disaster checklist at thecrisisplanner.com. Make sure you tune in next week as we explore summer vacation sure looks different this year. The family road trip is back. This is Linda Fostek, and you've been listening to The Linda Fostek Show. Get off the worry-go-round on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Until next week, maintain your healthy distancing. Be safe out there. Happy planning and no worries. Thank you and good night. You've been listening to The Linda Fostek Show. Join Linda each week for interesting topics such as in the news, extreme prepping, and home sweet home. Right here on The Linda Fostek Show. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.